the mine looks like a giant corkscrew, spiraling roughly four and a half miles down. When part of it collapsed, the 33 miners took shelter below in a so-called refuge chamber, a room that's about 500 square feet or the size of a small studio apartment. It's built to hold 35 people, has ventilation shafts, and the men have been rationing a couple of days' worth of emergency food and water. Through a hole about the size of a grapefruit, drilled roughly half a mile straight down, food, medicine, water, and communication devices will be delivered near the chamber to sustain the group, until a larger hole, roughly two feet in diameter, can be drilled to free the men. But that could take until Christmas. Two small shafts have already been drilled about half a mile straight down to where the miners are waiting. These channels act as a sort of umbilical cord so that rescuers can deliver capsules of medicine, food, water, and communications equipment. Drilling experts from a dozen countries were called in, and eventually three rescue holes were attempted, known as plans A, B, and C. To reach the miners nearly 2,300 feet down, rescuers plan to use a larger drill to slowly bore down as much as 100 feet per day. The tunnel will be 26 inches wide, but once rescue equipment is lowered, miners will only have about 19 inches of space in which to squeeze. From the time this water, medicine, and food is lowered into long metal canisters called doves and lowered to the men below, it takes 30 minutes. They're threaded through one of three small shafts and lowered about a half a mile straight down. The miners are now receiving some solid food, each getting about 1,000 calories per day and they're able to leave their small refuge chamber. Below the collapsed part of the mine, there's about 330 feet, roughly the size of two Olympic swimming pools, in which it's relatively safe to move around. Keeping them healthy is just one of the challenges for rescuers. And exercise is a key issue. Once a rescue hole is drilled, the miner's waist size can be no bigger than 35 inches, as they'll need to squeeze into a space that's roughly the size of a bicycle tire. The target area for the drill is known as the workshop, located across from and slightly higher than the miners' living area. The miners themselves will complete the rescue shaft by blasting it with dynamite. Engineers above ground will then use a TV camera to inspect the rescue hole and decide if it needs to be reinforced with a metal lining. Installing a lining could delay rescue anywhere from 4 to 10 days. During today's key test, the capsule was lowered 2,000 feet down the rescue shaft. Engineers stopped it just 46 feet short of where the miners are trapped. And now a winch system is being installed. A 270 horsepower motor will hoist up the capsule. The rescue must wait until the concrete base holding the winch system hardens. Rescue workers are being lowered to assist and send up the miners. Once all of the rescue team is in position, officials expect to be able to extract one miner each hour. The 2,000-foot journey up should take between 10 to 15 minutes. A winch system will haul the miners up at about 3 feet a second. 